Hello, in this video we're going to do a very important proof. We're going to prove that when you have an equivalence relation on a non-empty set, that the equivalence classes partition your set. So what does that mean? That basically means that every element in our set A belongs to exactly one equivalence class, and all of these are also non-empty. So a partition of A is basically a collection of non-empty subsets of A, such that every element in A belongs to exactly one of these subsets. Said another way, we have a non-empty collection of pairwise just joint sets whose union is A, which is really, really cool. So basically we have to show in this proof that every single element of A belongs to exactly one of these, and we also have to show that these are non-empty. So let's go ahead and go through the proof and do everything very carefully. I'll also recall what, what this is. So the equivalence class of A is the set of all X in A such that X is related to A. This is, this is a big result uh, in mathematics. It does take um, a lot of work to get here though in terms of like definitions and you have to know some stuff to, to make it this far. Um, so let's first establish why all of these are non-empty. So R is an equivalence relation. So since R is an equivalence relation, it is reflexive. Okay, it is reflexive. So for all A in little a, we have A related to A. And that's what it means to be an element in the equivalence class of A. So A is an A. Hence, the equivalence class of A is non-empty. And this holds for all A and A. So all of these, all of these are non-empty sets. So we've established that fact. Now we have to show that every element of big A belongs to exactly one of these. So take any X in A. And since R is reflexive, we have that X is in the equivalence class of X. And that's again because, that's also again because X is related to X by reflexivity, right? So same thing, since X is related to X. So X belongs to at least, to at least one equivalence class. Okay, so now we have to show it belongs to at most one equivalence class and that would imply that it belongs to exactly one. So we know it belongs to at least one equivalence class. So let's suppose that it belongs to two equivalence classes. So suppose that X belongs to the equivalence class of A and X belongs to the equivalence class of B. So this would imply that X is related to A and X is related to B, okay? And now we need to somehow um, use this to show uh, A is related to B, so note X related to A implies A related to X by symmetry. Because it's an equivalence relation, we have symmetry. And so now, note if we use this one and this one, so note A related to X and X related to B implies a related to B by transitivity. Again, that's another property of an equivalence relation. So we've already used, we've used symmetry, transitivity, and uh, we used reflexivity. So we've used all the key properties, okay? And then since A is related to B, we have that the equivalence class of A is equal to the equivalence class of B. 
So this shows um, that they're the same. So X must belong to a unique. So this shows, so this shows X must belong to a unique equivalence class. So again, we, we started by showing that it belongs to at least one equivalence class, and then we assumed it belongs to two of them, and whenever that happens, it's actually the same one. So X really only belongs to exactly one equivalence class. So every element in A, right, because we took any X, we took any X in A, and we showed again that it belongs to at least one equivalence class, and then we showed that if it belongs to two equivalence classes, they must in fact be the same. Therefore, X belongs to exactly one and only one equivalence class. And that shows uh, that this is a partition of A. So thus, S is a partition of A. And that completes the proof. So kind of a nice argument. Um, it's a big, a big result. Um, so basically what you can do now is you can take uh, A and you can write it uh, as a union of equivalence classes where these are pairwise disjoint. So like um, if you took um, two different equivalence classes and you intersected them, you know, they would, they would be empty. So you have this disjoint union. You have A written as a disjoint union of sets, which is really cool. And you can define all kinds of equivalence classes in mathematics in all kinds of areas of math. Um, and you can explore structure and other things. It comes up in group theory, comes up in topology, etc. And this is the main result, which basically says when you have an equivalence um, relation on an empty set, you can write A uh, as a disjoint union, or in other words, uh, every element of A belongs to exactly uh, one of these equivalence classes and they are all non-empty. So I hope this video has been helpful to someone in the world. Good luck.